our viewers welcome to may june 2020 wayek also known as wasi past questions and detailed solution general mathematics mathematics core paper 2 part 2 this part contains questions 6 to 13 about eight questions and you are expected to answer five questions in this part solution to eight questions in one video question 6a copy and complete the table of values for the relation y equal to 3 sine 2 s you have the table of values with some values missing for y and you are expected to solve for them b using a scale of 2 cm to 15 degrees on the s axis and 2 cm to 1 unit on the y axis draw the graph of y equal to 3 sine 2 s for 0 degrees less than or equal to s less than or equal to 150 degrees see part of the question use the graph to find the truth set of one three sine two s plus two equal to zero one two three over two sine two s equal to zero point two five solution part a is to complete the table of values to get y this is just what is needed so i'm going to take one trial and show you how to go about it when s is 120 degrees y is equal to 3 sine 2 s so you have to multiply s 120 by 2 and that is what you have here if you multiply you have 3 sine 240 degrees so you have to check sine 240 degrees first and that is minus 0 0.8660 before you use the coefficient of 3 to multiply it and that gives minus 2.5 980 and to one decimal place you have minus one sorry minus 2.6 to one decimal place minus 2.6 that is the value of y where s is 120 degrees so you do the same thing for others you can use your calculator directly you can enter this value in your calculator directly and you get the answer b part we are to plot the graph let's start with the given scale 2 cm to 15 degrees on the s axis 2 cm to 1 unit on the y axis this graph that i'm using you can see that each boss has five lines so that five lines implies one c n the meaning is that you have to combine two bosses to have two c m and you give it one by the given scale the next two bosses becomes two the next two bosses becomes three and so on if you go down you have minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 on the s axis same thing two buses is 15 degrees the next two becomes 30 degrees the next two is 45 you have 60 75 
90 105 120 135 150 or in degrees this k simply implies that one line is 0 0.1 units on y axis and 1.5 degrees on s axis 0 0.1 unit on y axis 1.5 degrees on s axis to get that 0 0.1 it's very simple the 2 cm you have here is 10 lines the 10 lines is 1 unit so divide 1 by 10 it gives 0 0.1 then on the s axis you divide 15 by 10 and you have 1.5 next thing is to plot the coordinates when s is 0 y is 0 you plot that at the origin this is the origin when s is 15 degrees y is 1.5 after 1 you count 5 lines up and you have 1.5 somewhere here against 15 degrees when s is 30 degrees y is 2.6 after 2 you can't six lines up you have it here when s is 45 degrees y is 3.0 that one is very easy to trace when s is 60 degrees y is 2.6 somewhere here when s is 75 degrees y is 1.5 when s is 90 degrees y is 0 you plot that point directly on the y axis sorry on the s axis you plot it directly on the s axis when s is 105 degrees y is minus 1.5 so the graph is going down now when s is 120 degrees y is minus 2.6 after 2 after minus 2 you count 6 lines down and you have minus 2.6 when s is 135 degrees y is minus 3 and when s is 150 degrees y is minus 2.6 so we take because of 2 cm now we take the edge here as 150 and you have minus 2.6 all the points have been plotted next thing is to join them together and use the graph to answer c part of the question all the points have been joined together so let's move to C part use the graph to find the truth set of Roman figure 1 3 sine 2 s plus 2 equal to 0 you can only use the graph to solve this equation if and only if it can be adjusted to the one that is plotted for you to achieve this you simply transfer plus 2 to the right hand side and you have 3 sine 2s equal to minus 2 and what you have here is equal to y it simply means that the solution to the equation occurs at y equal to minus 2 you go to the y axis and you locate minus 2 then you trace it to meet the curve at this point and you trace to s axis remember that on the s axis one line is minus
my one line is 1.5 degrees 1.5 so after 150 you have about four lines so after 105 after 105 you have about four lines so those four lines means 1.5 times 4 1.5 times 4 that should give you about 6 so if you add the 6 to 105 degrees you have 111 degrees from if you got 2 you should find the true set of 3 over 2 sine 2s equal to 0 0.25 to get the graph that is plotted or the the equation you have to multiply true by 2 to remove this 2 that is clear fraction and you have 3 sine 2s is equal to 2 times 0 0.25 and that is 3 sine 2s equal to 0 0.5 this means that the solution to the equation occurs at y equal to 0 0.5 you move to the y axis we have stated that one line is 0, point, 0 0.1 so if you count five lines somewhere here is 0 0.5 so you trace to meet the curve at all possible points one point is here another point is here if you trace the first point to the s axis noting that one line is 1.5 degrees you have 4.5 degrees and for the second point if you count from 75 degrees to where the line falls in, you have 87 degrees. So the true set of that equation is S equal to 4.5 degrees and 87 degrees. Question 7a. The diagram shows a wooden structure in form of a cone mounted on a hemispherical base. The vertical height of the cone is 48 cm and the base radius is 14 cm. Calculate correct to 3 sf the surface area of the structure take pi equal to 22 over 7 solution surface area of the structure is simply surface area of cone plus surface area of hemisphere that of a cone is this and hemisphere 2 pi arrow squared if you check that of a cone the height is 48 cm radius 14 cm the slant height is unknown so you need to get L and in right circular cone there is a relationship between the slant height the height and the radius in form of Pythagoras rule so the height is 48 you have 48 square plus radius 14 squared you have these two values and when you add you have 2500 to get L you take the square root of both sides and that gives 50 centimeters now surface area of the structure is for the cone you have 22 over 7 times radius 14 bracket open radius 14 plus the slant height 50 plus 
for the hemisphere, you have 2 times pi, 22 over 7 times radius, 14 square. From here, you can divide 14 by 7. You are left with 2 here. So you have 22 times 2. If you add the terms in the bracket, you have 64. 2 times 22 over 7, that is 44 over 7. You simplify 14 squared, you have 196. That simplifies to this, and when you multiply, you get this result. When you add, you get this result. So 3SF, you are interested in 404. The next digit 8 is greater than 5 you round it up to 1 and you add it to 4 then you have 4050 square centimeters as the surface area of the structure to 3sf question 7b 5 years ago Musa was twice as old as Sisi. If the sum of their ages is 100, find Sisi present age. Solution. So let Musa's age be M and Sisi's age be S. Five years ago, that means you subtract five from their respective ages and you have m minus 5 and s minus 5 but five years ago musa was twice that is two times she says age that gives this expression if you open the bracket in the right hand side you have m minus 5 equal to 2 s minus 10 if you rearrange you have this and finally you have m minus 2s equal to minus 5 let's call that equation 1 now sum of their ages is 100 that is m plus s equal to 100 you call that equation 2 so you solve the equations simultaneously and I want to use elimination method. Here, variable m is easier to eliminate because it has the same coefficient of 1 in both equations. Since the signs, they are the same, plus and plus, you need to subtract equation 1 and 2 in order to eliminate m. So m minus m is 0 minus 2s minus plus s that means minus 2s minus s that is minus 3s minus 5 minus 100 minus 105 to get s divide both sides by minus 3 minus 3 Divide both sides by minus 3 and you have S, C says H to be 35 years. You are supposed to stop here. Assuming you are asked to find Musa's age, then you continue by solving for M using S equal to, 20, equal to 35 in either equation 1 or 2. So here I'm using equation 2. S is 35. So you have M plus 35 equal to 100. Collect like terms. You have M equal to 100 minus 35 equal to 65. Therefore, C says present age is 35 years going by what is required of you 
in the question supposed to stop here supposed to stop there question 8a mrs maureen spent one over four of her monthly income at a shopping mall one over three at an open market and two over five of the remaining amount at a mechanic workshop if she had two hundred and twenty five thousand left find Roman figure one her monthly income Roman figure two the amount spent at the open market solution so let her monthly salary be s she spent one over four of s at the shopping mall that is s over four she spent two okay she spent one over three at the open market that is s over three and she spent two over five of the remaining amount so let's get the remainder now the remainder is the sum of what she spent at the shopping mall the open market minus her salary that is what you have here if you open the bracket you have this you can write s as s over one so that the lcm is 12 if you simplify you have this and 5s over 12 so she spent 2 over 5 of 5s over 12 at the mechanic workshop that is what you have here and that simplifies to s over 6 now what she spent at the shopping mall plus the open market plus the mechanic workshop plus what she had left together is equal to her monthly salary this is what you have here from this linear equation you solve for s mrs maureen monthly salary so remember figure one you already have the monthly salary now let us transfer these three fractions to the right hand side so that you have two two five zero 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 here equal to s minus s over four minus s over three minus s over six to clear the fractions multiply through by the lcm of 12 so you have 225,000 times 12 equal to you multiply s by 12 you have 12 s you multiply this term by 12 you have minus 3 s you multiply this term by 12 you have minus 4 s you multiply this term by 12 you have minus 6 s this simplifies to this to get s divide both sides by 3 so s is equal to this and if you divide 12 by 3 you have 4 times 225000 that gives 900000 naira as the monthly income of mrs maureen now we got two the amount spent at the open market that amount is one over three times her monthly salary or income that is one over three times nine hundred thousand and that gives three hundred thousand naira that is the amount that she spent at the open market Question 8b The third term of an arithmetic progression AP 
is 4m minus 2n. If the ninth term of the progression is 2m minus 8n, find the common difference in terms of m and n solution so all we have in the question center around the nth term formula of an ap which is this the third term t sub 3 is equal to 4m minus 2n at the third term number of terms n is equal to 3 so you have t sub 3 equal to first term is unknown that is a plus bracket open n is 3 minus 1 bracket close times common difference the third term is 4m minus 2n equal to a plus 2d let's call that equation 1 the ninth term that is t sub 9 is equal to 2m minus 8n at the ninth term number of terms n is equal to 9 so you have t sub 9 is equal to first term a plus bracket open n is 9 minus 1 bracket close times d the ninth term is 2m minus 8n equal to a plus 8d we are interested in the common difference so you solve equations 1 and 2 simultaneously using elimination method we simply have to eliminate a from both equations you eliminate a from both equations and you solve for d in terms of m and n so to eliminate a subtract equation 2 and 1 so you have the you take it side by side the left hand side of equation 2 minus the left hand side of equation 1 then equal to right hand side of equation 2 minus right hand side of equation 1 if you open the bracket with this minus you have 2m minus 8n minus 4m plus 2n you also have a plus 8d minus a minus 2d at this point if you subtract and add correspondingly you have 2m minus 4m is minus 2m now minus 8n plus 2n you have minus 6n 8 sorry a minus a a minus a is 0 and you have 8d minus 2d you have 6d to get d divide through by minus 6 divide through by 6 not minus 6 divide through by 6 and you have it in this form from here you can factor out minus 2 you factor out minus 2 from the bracket you are left with m plus 3 n now you divide 2 by 6 or you, you divide 2 and 6 by 2 3 is remaining here so you have minus 1 over 3 bracket open m plus 3 n as the common difference in terms of m and n Peter Kors simplified maths. If you are viewing and watching from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe for more updates from time to time. Like and share PSM videos. If you are viewing and watching from 
Facebook, follow and like the page for more updates as well. Also share PSL videos. Question 9. Two cyclists S and Y leave turn O at the same time. Cyclist S travels at the rate of 5 kilometers per hour, that is the, the, the speed, on a bearing of 0 0.49 degrees. Remember, it's from turn O. And cyclist Y travels at the rate of 9 kilometers per hour on a bearing of 319 degrees. A part of the question illustrates the information on a diagram. B part, after traveling for two hours, calculate correct to the nearest whole number. To the nearest whole number. D, what if you got one? Distance between cyclist S and Y. Roman figure 2, bearing of cyclist S from Y. See part of the question. Find the average speed at which cyclist S will get to Y in 4 hours. So you have solution a part of the question the two cyclists s and y both journeyed from turn o the bearing of s from o is 0 49 degrees and the bearing of y from o is 319 degrees now, 0 0.49 is in the first quadrant, and 3.19 is in the fourth quadrant. So, turn O has to be somewhere here, so that 49 degrees from turn O to turn S, you can see in the, fourth, in the first quadrant to turn S. And 319 degrees from turn O to Y, you have it in the fourth quadrant. As you are doing that, you must also consider the rate at which they travel. That helps you to, to, to draw diagram to scale. S is 5 kilometers and Y is 9, so 5 is shorter. So the distance or the the distance now from turn O to S, which we are to obtain from the speed, which is shorter than the one of turn O to turn Y. So this is the diagram. Now, Y is here 41. Now from this place like this, the whole of this place is 319. And you know that the whole quadrant is 360 degrees. So, if from the north to this point here is 319, the remaining place here becomes 41 degrees. That is 360 minus 319. So, the whole of this angle now is 90 degrees. 41 plus 49. That means that triangle SOY is a right angle triangle. So we are asked to find the distance between S and Y. Now we have to get the distance between O and Y using the rate, that is the, that is the, the speed and the distance between O and S using the speed as well. You know, distance is speed over time. The time given to you is after two hours. So you can get the distance between tan O and tan S, then tan O and tan Y 
then you can find the distance between tan s and tan y okay as i have said the speed is given to you and the time is two hours in order to get the distance between s and y the distance between o s or from o to s and from o to y is needed and that distance is simply speed times time the time is two hours so distance from o to s is five times two that is 10 kilometers the distance from o to y is nine times two and that is 18 kilometers from figure one of b distance between s and y can be obtained using pythagoras rule since triangle s o y is a right angled triangle you know s y is the side facing the right angle that means s y is the hypotenuse so you have s y squared equal to o s squared plus o y squared so you have this expression after replacing o s and o y with their values so you have s y squared is equal to 100 plus 324 and that is 424 to get s y you take the root of both sides so s y is equal to square root of 424 and that is 20.59 20.59 to the nearest whole number we are considering 20 the next number is 5 you round it up to 1 and add it to 20 you have 21 kilometers as the distance between cyclist s and cyclist y roman figure 2 of part b to find the bearing of cyclist s from y that bearing is 180 degrees minus theta minus 41 degrees theta is needed so let us have the diagram for better understanding of this part the bearing of cyclist s from y from y you go to y and you start from the north to that line that join cyclist s and y together this is the bearing the angle you must get and to get that angle you know that the whole of that side half of the quadrant is 180 degrees so if you subtract theta and 41 from 180 degrees you get the remaining angle so you must calculate for theta for theta and we can use sine rule but now we know o s we know that now this angle is known as well and we know side s y if you have two sides and one angle you can get the other angle using sine rule so you have o s you can see o s here over sine theta equal to you have s y over sine now this angle is 90 degrees 90 degrees okay to get theta the expression is already here o s is 10 over sine theta equal to s y from roman figure one of part b is 20.59 over sine 90 you make sine theta the subject you cross multiply and divide by 
0.59 you have it in this form you know sine 90 is 1 1 times 10 is 10 over 20.59 you divide you have 0 0.48 five six seven to get theta you shake the inverse of sine of zero point four eight five six seven and that gives twenty nine point zero five six degrees therefore bearing of cycle s from y is equal to one eighty degrees minus theta now theta is 29.056 degrees minus 41 degrees and that gives 109.944 degrees to the nearest degrees or whole number there you have 110 degrees C part of the question find the average speed at which cyclic S will get to Y in 4 hours so the time that S will get to Y is 4 hours and the distance between S and Y is 20.59 average speed is simply distance over time so you have distance between s and y and the time between s and y and that is 20.59 divided by 4 and you have 5.1475 kilometers per hour question 10 the table shows the distribution of marks obtained by students in an examination you have the mark in percentage from 0 to 9 7 students fall in that group 10 to 19 11 students 20 to 29 17 students 30 to 39 20 students and so on you have the last group 19 to 99 you have six students a part of the question constructs a cumulative frequency table for the distribution b draw the cumulative frequency curve for the distribution c using the curve find correct to one decimal place d remember you got one median mark median mark remember you got two lowest mark for distinction if five percent of the students passed with distinction this is very easy you just you arrange the table you draw it in a vertical manner you just need to add two columns in order to plot the cumulative frequency curve you add cumulative frequency and class boundary you have solution a part cumulative frequency table so the max here serve as class interval you have the frequency Cumulative frequency is simply the addition where the first one is the first frequency 7. So you add 7 to the next frequency 11, you have 18. 18 plus 17, you have 35. Plus 20, you have 55. Plus 29, you have 84. Plus 34, you have 118 plus 30 you have 148 plus 25 you have 173 plus 21 194 plus 6 you have 200 so because all we just need 
you know before now you're supposed to construct class boundary but here all we need to construct the curve is upper class boundary against the cumulative frequency against the upper class boundary so we just compute only the upper class boundary in doing that you need to obtain the boundary value the boundary value is difference in adjacent sides divided by 2 you can take 10 9 the difference is 1 you can take 20 19 the difference is also 1 divide 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 so you add the boundary value to the upper class limit to get the upper class boundary if you are interested in lower class boundary you subtract the boundary value from the lower class limit here we are adding so 9 plus 0 0.5 you have 9.5 19 plus 0 0.5 you have 19.5 and so on let's jump to 99 plus 0 0.5 you have 99.5 next thing you plot cumulative frequency against the upper class boundary and that gives the cumulative frequency curve also known as OG. We are now in B part construction of the cumulative frequency curve. You have the vertical axis is cumulative frequency and the horizontal axis is the upper class boundary. On the vertical axis the scale we use is one centimeter to 10 units so if here is 10 the next one is 20 you have 30 followed by 40 and 50 because i don't want the values too close so i i i left those space behind but i just explained that the values are there all right so the scale 1 cm to 10 units that implies that one line is 2 one line is 2 on the upper class boundary as is there is no special scale you start from the first one 9.5 till the last one 99.5 if you also note now the difference between any two point there is 10 you have 10 10 10 so here you can also take one one line as two so after 9.5 the next one is 11.5 and so on the first frequency is seven now if one line here is two that means seven is between six and eight the middle here is seven you plot it against 9.5 the next frequency is 18 18 must be between okay 18 should be the line before 20 here is 29 so because one line is 2 so you have 18 here the fourth line from 10 is 18 the next frequency is 35 between 34 and 36 the next frequency is 55 between 50 between 54 and 56 54 and 56 the the next one there the next one is 84 have 84 the next frequency is 84 and 84 is here 84 can be traced the next frequency is 1118 that is close to 120 close to 120 that is against 
59.5 the next frequency is 148 close to 150 the last line before 150 and you plot that against 69.5 the next frequency is 173 and it's between 172 and 174 you plot it against 79.5 the next frequency is 194 can be obtained directly you plot that against 89.5 the next frequency is 200 the last point against 99.5 now, if you plot the OGIP or cumulative curve correctly, you always have S shape from it. And from this point, the S shape is already visible. So let us join the points together and use the curve to answer C part of the question. All the points have been joined together and you can see the S shape very clear. See part of the question. Use the curve to find the median mark to one decimal place. Now, median is half of the entire distribution. That is 1 over 2 of 200. And that gives the 100th position of cumulative frequency so you come to the vertical axis and you locate 100 this is 100 the median you trace to the curve at this point and you trace down to the upper class boundary axis now we have it on the third line on the third line now one line is two as, as, as i said earlier so after 49.5 the first line is 51.5 the next line the second is 53.5 and the third is 55.5 that is why the median is 55.5 2. Now we got 2. Lowest mark for distinction if 5% of the students passed with distinction. So let's get 5%. 5% 5 of 200 is 10. That means 10 students passed with distinction. So that means that 190 did not pass with Distinction. So you get the lowest mark from 190 students that could not attain distinction. So this is 190. You trace 190 to the curve and you trace down. If you trace down, you have it here. If you do the usual counting, it's going to be 87.5 because it is on the fourth line so if you count from 79.5 you have 87.5 as the lowest mark you must get before you pass with this t-shirt peter course simplified maths if you are viewing and watching from youtube don't forget to subscribe to get updated from time to time when the next video is available, like and share PSM videos. If you are watching a view from Facebook, follow and like the page for more updates. Also share PSM videos. Question 11A. In the diagram, MNPQ is a circle with center O. MN equal to NP and angle O M N is 50 degrees find prima figure 1 angle M N P that is this angle 
Remember, I forgot two angle P O Q. That is this angle. Now, from the diagram, M N P Q is a quadrilateral that is inscribed in a circle. So we can get this angle using this angle. Their sum is 180. So let's start from there. Angle O M N plus angle N P Q is 180 degrees. Sum of opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. Angle O M N is 50 degrees plus angle N P Q. The sum is 180. Collect like terms. Angle N P Q is 180 degrees minus 50 degrees and that is 130 degrees so the whole of this angle now whole of this angle is 130 now if o is the center of the circle it means m q is a diameter and as such this angle is 90 degrees angle in a semi circle so angle m p q is 90 degrees now we can get this remaining angle or the whole of this angle is 130 now part of it is 90 so the remaining part that is angle m p n is 130 degrees minus 90 degrees and that is 40 degrees from the question m n is equal to n p that means triangle m n p is isosceles triangle and as such the base angles are equal so this angle is equal to this angle that is 40 40 degrees so in triangle m n p if you add the three angles the sum is 180 degrees because in that triangle we can get angle m and P. So if you add, you have it in this form. So angle M and P is there. You add again, you get 180. And if you collect like terms, you have angle M and P equal to 180 degrees minus 80 degrees. And that is 100 degrees. So this angle is 100 degrees. Let's proceed. And look for angle P O Q. Remember figure two of question eleven A. We have to get angle P O Q. Now let's consider this angle like this and this angle like this. From that angle, we need this angle. And we have two angles in that place. The reflex angle. M O P. This is the reflex angle M O P, and this angle is equal to two times this angle. Angle at center is twice angle at circumference. That is what you have here. So it means that reflex angle M O P is two times one hundred degrees, and that is. 200 degrees now let's get the obtuse angle angle at the center you have reflex angle mop and obtuse angle mop their sum is 360 degrees angles at a point so you have it in this form and angle mop the obtuse angle is 360 degrees minus 200 degrees and that is 160 degrees now check it the the obtuse angle and this angle p o q they are on a straight line so if you add them together the sum is 180 so you have 160 degrees plus angle p o q equal to 180 degrees Therefore, angle POQ is 180 degrees minus 160 
60 degrees and that is 20 degrees that is a value of angle p o q question 11b find the equation of the line which has the same gradient as this as 8y plus 4s equal to 24 and passes through the point minus 8 12 so from this equation you get the gradient with this point you form that equation so let's rearrange this in the form of this where m is the gradient so you have to transfer plus 4s so you have 8y equal to minus 4s plus 24 divide through by 8 you have this result if you reduce you have this already in this form so it means that the gradient m is 1 is minus 1 over 2 so the required equation now can be obtained using this because you know this m is supposed to be y2 minus y1 over s2 minus s1 already m is known so from this coordinate s1 is minus 8 y1 is 12 so you have it in this form if you simplify you have this result if you cross multiply you have this result if you open the brackets you have this result now let's collect like terms move ys one side and the constant the other side and you have this result finally you have 2y plus s equal to 16 as the equation that has the same gradient with this equation 8y plus 4s equal to 24 question 12a in the diagram ab is a tangent to the circle o and cob is a straight line if cd this is cd is parallel to ab and angle a b e is 40 degrees find angle o d e that is this angle find angle o d e solution now because c d and a b are parallel this angle is 40 degrees alternate angle so you have angle o c d is equal to angle a b c and that is 40 degrees alternate angles now if o is the center it means c e is a diameter and the whole of this angle is 90 degrees so angle c d e is 90 degrees in triangle o c d you can see that o c is a radius o d is also a radius that means that triangle is isosceles triangle the base angles are equal so if here is 40 here is also 40 degrees and you know the whole of this angle as 90 if part of it is 40 to get o d e you simply subtract 90 from 40 so angle o d e is equal to angle c d e minus angle o d c and that is 90 degrees minus 40 degrees and you have 50 degrees question 12 b a b c d is a parallelogram in which c d is 7 c m a d is 5 c m angle a d c is 125 c 125 degrees my figure one illustrate the information in the diagram my figure two find correct to one decimal place 
the area of the parallelogram all right now we must look at this angle a d c you know you should know that in three letters notation the middle letter d that is where the angle is so if here is d that means we must have a here and we have c so this point becomes b so because so we have b before a because we consider the given angles so from this cd is 7 cf you have ad this side is 5 cf so you answer part one of that question now if you go to you should find the area of the parallelogram the area can be obtained using a b times sine theta a b times sine theta so you have a the 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 base now is seven and the angle there 125 that simply gives 35 times 0 0.81951 and you have 28.7 square centimeters to one decimal place or you can also find the area using the base times height already the base is seven so the height is needed the height is needed now to get the height from this place you need this angle you need this angle now this angle here plus 125 degrees is equal to 180 sum of interior opposite angle this is what you have here and when you add you get this so the angle we needed to get the height is angle b c d and that angle become 55 degrees so we consider triangle b e c so this is opposite the side face this angle and this is hypotenuse so you have sine 5 5 degrees is equal to opposite b e over hypotenuse b c that is h over 5 and h the height is simply 5 times sine 5 5 degrees you have 5 times this equal to this so the area is now the base that is b times times uh, times the height the base is seven so here is seven so seven times four point zero nine five seven five you have twenty eight point six seven zero two five to one decimal place you have twenty eight point seven square centimeter so it is same as this but one is shorter and very easy the other one is longer and take much time to do so it depends on how you understand the question question 12 c if s is equal to 1 over 2 bracket open 1 minus root 2 bracket close evaluate 2s squared minus 2s now this is s so let's get 2s squared you have to square s and multiply it by 2 if you square 1 over 2 you have 1 over 4 then it multiplies 2 because of the square you write the many terms twice in this form and you expand so divide 2 and 4 by 2 2 is remaining here so you have 1 over 2 if you expand the two brackets you have these two results if you add like terms you have 1 over 2 bracket open 3 minus 2 root 2 that is 1 plus 2 is 3 minus root 2 minus root 2 like minus 1 minus also you have minus 2 root 2 if you open the bracket 3 times 1 over 2 is 3 over 2 you multiply this by 1 over 2 
2 will cancel 2. So you have root 2. Now let's get 2s. For 2s, you multiply s by 2 in this manner. 2 will cancel 2. You are left with 1 minus root 2. So the whole of the expression together. This is 2s squared minus. Now 2s is coming after a minus sign and it has two terms so you put it in a bracket so you open the bracket with this minus sign and you have this so from here minus root 2 plus root 2 is 0 you are left with 3 over 2 minus 1 you find the SEM and simplify you have 3 minus 2 over 2 and that is 1 over 2 Peter Kors simplified maths if you are viewing and watching from YouTube don't forget to subscribe for more updates from time to time like and share PSM videos if you are viewing and watching from Facebook follow and like the page for more updates from time to time also share PSM videos Question 13a. This question is on construction and because of the practical nature of construction and its demonstration, you need to consult your mathematics teacher for more details. Question 13b. Using completing the square method solve 4s squared minus 4 root 3s plus 3 equal to 0, leaving your answer in solved form. This method involves a number of steps and I'm going to highlight them and solve the equation with them. Step 1. Make the coefficient of s squared unitary that is 1 to achieve this divide through the equation by 4 the coefficient of s squared so you have s squared minus if you divide the second term by 4 you are left with root 3 times s you divide the constant by 4 you have 13 you have 3 over 4 3 over 4 equal to 0. Step 1 transfer the constant term to the right hand side. If you transfer the constant term, it becomes negative. Step 3 add square of half of coefficient of s to both sides. In this step, the coefficient of s is minus root 3 so you get half of minus root 3 and you square it and add it to both sides this is what you are adding to both sides so you add it to the left hand side and you add it to the right hand side add square of half of coefficient of s to both sides that coefficient is minus root 3. You get half of it and you add it. Let us proceed to step 4 and others. Step 4. Ignore the term that contains S and simplify the right hand side. From step 3, if you ignore the term that contains S, in the left hand side the middle term you are left with this so the right hand side you simplify it already you have minus 3 over 4 if you take the square of minus root 3 you have 3 and the square of 2 is 4 so you have plus 3 over 4 by simplifying minus root 3 over 2 all squared. So let's find it. You find here you have like fractions. You simply add the numerator in this form and that gives 
0 over 4. So the right hand side is now 0. So you equate the left hand side to 0. Step 5, you combine the squares on the left hand side. You have s squared here and this term is squared. Combining is a way of factoring out the square. When you do that, you have s plus minus root 3 over 2 all squared. So that plus minus is minus equal to 0. Next step, that is step 6. Take the square roots of both sides and solve the linear equation. This is the square root of both sides. Normally, if you are taking the square root of the right hand side, we always include plus minus so that we can get the two results needed. So because it is zero now, it actually has no effect. It will still be zero. So the square root will remove square. You are left with S minus root three over two and that is equal to zero. To solve the equation, you simply transfer this term to the right hand side and you have s equal to root 3 over 2. You are asked to leave your answer in sort form and this is the sort form of the answer. To end this paper, there is every need for you to be saved if you are not to be saved you just have to give your life to the lord jesus christ and you confess him as your lord and personal savior every day of your life if you are saved already congratulations live righteously and be prepared because on the last day some will be taken and some will be left take good care of yourself stay out of trouble study your books do the needful always flee every appearance of evil don't defraud others to make money use your hands and your brain to work genuinely and legally and the lord will bless you goodbye and stay tuned